first and foremost, we are going to create a new document. We're going to choose a solid color. So we're going to copy the first hex code. So we copy the first hex code. Then we paste. We click OK. We are going to create another solid color. With the mark selected, we are going to grab our soft round brush, increase the opacity to 100. We are going to set the foreground color to black. With the right bracket key, we are going to increase the brush size. Then we are going to click. So you can click like three times. Once that is done, it select the move tool. With the layer selected, we are going to create a new layer above it. Grab our brush, soft turn brush, set the foreground color to white, set opacity to 100. We are going to use the left bucket key to reduce the brush size, and you click once. With the move to selected, this is before and after. We are going to change the blend mode to overlay. So we are going to take the opacity down. This is before and after. So let's grab our resources for the work. First and foremost, we are going to grab the subject. Let's copy this texture first. Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl V to paste. Ctrl T, we are going to transform and make it bigger. So we scale it up. Then we click the check mark to confirm. With the layer selected, we are going to change the blend mode to multiply. This is before and after. So let's go for our subject now. We lock this layer first. So you grab your rulers and position them this way. Another one this way. So we have the last one. Let's go for our subject. So we copy this. Ctrl C to copy Ctrl V to paste. So we are going to position it right in the middle. Ctrl E. And we click the align the vertical to align it in the middle. We grab these two chickens. So with these two layers selected, Ctrl C to copy. Ctrl V to paste. We are going to position it just this way. So we are going to position it just this way. And we'll go for our next item. So we copy. Control V to copy control. Control C to copy control V to pay, sorry. So we copy. Let's grab our next item. So you can as well drag and bring it into the work area. But I always prefer to copy. So we are going to drop this layer. And we are going to position it. We make it smaller. Control T to transform. We make it, we scale it down. So we are going to copy the smoke now. Ctrl C to copy Ctrl V to paste. So we position it just this way on top of the chicken. So Ctrl C to copy, we copy this shape. Ctrl V to paste. And we are going to position it this way. Once we have it in the middle, we click the check mark to confirm. And we are going to drop the layer beneath the chicken box. So let's grab this item, Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl V to paste. Ctrl J to make a copy. So we have a duplicate and we are going to right click and flip horizontal. 
after we click the chat mark to confirm. We make another copy control G. We rotate it as well. Rotate 90 clockwise. Okay. Then we click the check mark to confirm. So we copy this item, Control C to copy Control V to paste. We are going to set it as alt first. With this layer selected, we are going to make a copy Control J, and we will drop the second one. First of all, we make it smaller by holding Shift. Then we drop it. So we'll be distorting this layer. Once it is in place, we click the check mark to confirm. We position it well with the layer selected. I'm going to right click and select this perspective. So we right click and distort. Resuming and we distort it. So we cannot play our guys. We select the layer we right click and we distort. That's way too much. So we distort it just a bit and clean the check mark to confirm. So we are going to grab our key and see this right here. Click the check mark to call friends. So show me. This is before and after. With the shape layer selected. We are actually going to subtract the selection from this shape layer. So with the layer selected, we create a max. Then we can actually put it off by clicking the eye icon. Then we, get, we grab the polygonal lasso tool. And we are going to create a selection around KFC. We are going to create a selection around this. We bring the layer back. Then we right click and fill. We are going to choose foreground color. Since our foreground color is set to black, anything in black will be hitting. So once we select, we click OK, it is gone. We grab our move tool and we are going to position this. So with the text selected, we are going to right click and distort a bit. So I'm going to right click and we'll warp this just a little bit. We click the check mark to confirm. So 
So we did yeah, selected. I want to change the blend mode. True Valley. Same upline for this one. So once that is in place, we did layer selected. We are going to apply an exposure adjustment layer on it. So first of all, we are going to clip it onto the layer. And we take the sliders down for shadows. This is before and after. With the max selected, Control I to invert. And we grab a soft tone brush. We reduce the opacity. And we set our foreground to white since we are going to paint. So we zoom out. We make the brush size smaller by pressing the left arrow key. The left bracket key. And we are going to paint some shadows just this way. This is before and after. So we are going to do the same thing for the other one. With that selected. Before and after. We are going to create an exposure adjustment layer. Create an exposure adjustment layer. Before and after, with the max selected, Control I to invert. So we set our foreground color to white. Then we are going to paint. Then we are going to paint. This is before and after. So we take down the opacity. So we are going to create another exposure adjustment layer by this time around onto the box. So we clip it so that the effect applies only to the layer with the max selected control I to invert. And we are going to grab a soft tone brush. We increase the opacity a bit to make the brush smaller. By the left bracket key, then we are going to paint some shadows because this is too bright. So we are just going to paint this way. This is before and after. That looks way too much. So we change the foreground color to black and we are going to clean just a bit. So with the foreground color set to black, anything that is painted is being cleaned. But in white, we are actually painting. So this is before and after. With the move to select that. We are going to apply more shadows. But first and foremost, we select this layer. And we are going to create an exposure adjustment layer onto it. So we clip that so the effect applies only to that layer. With the max selected control I invert. We grab a soft tone brush. Increase the opacity a bit. And we are going to change our foreground to white. Don't forget. I almost forgot that. We change our foreground color to white and we are going to paint. So we just paint this way. This is before and after. So the same trick apply for this one as well. And any other thing you want to do. So exposure. You clip it with the mark selected. Control I to invert. You grab a soft tone brush. You set the foreground color to white. In the opacity at 11, then you paint.
to be the chicken box selected we are going to apply exposure onto that one as well with the max selected control i to invert then we are going to grab a soft hand brush we are going to be painting some shadows on it We are going to apply some shadows. We zoom in. This is before and after. So we are going to change the foreground color to black and we are going to clean some parts for this uh, for this portion so we can clean. We grab our mouth to them, we zoom out. We're almost getting to the end, so if you have made it so far, if you have made it this far, thank you very much for sticking around. So we create a new layer. We will make the brush bigger. Then we right click and we are going to change the roundness. You can actually change the roundness in the brush settings, but I'm feeling lazy to do that. So let's just right click and do it manually over here. All right, so we are going to create some shadows, contact shadows beneath all this element we have right here. All right. And I love to separate all my layers so that I can work with them separately. So I create another layer. And we double. Okay, we just click once. And we have the shadows underneath. We reduce the opacity. I create another layer. Then I click once. Click once. Then I have my shadows this way. I reduce the opacity. I'm going to create another layer. This time around, I right click and I make the roundness bigger. So I'm just going to click once. This is way too much, so I have to reduce the opacity. You right click and distort it. So we can reduce the opacity. Alright, we are almost getting there. So we are going to select the exposure layer above this. Grab a soft hand brush. Right click and change the roundness to normal. Take down the opacity. Set our foreground to white. We are going to apply some shadows just this way. Before and after. So we are going to copy the last S code we have here. With the layer selected. I'm going to create a solid color. 
So we are going to paste the hex code here. We drop the layer beneath. Sorry, we undo that. So we undo that once we have the layer here. The blend mode to linear dot add. Sorry for your eyes. I select the max. Control I to invert. So everything is gone. I'm going to grab a soft hand brush and paint some back. So with the foreground set to white. I'm going to make the brush bigger by the right bracket key. And I start painting just this is this has to be saddled because I don't want too much of it so I just paint a little this is before and after I reduce the opacity this will grab our motor with this layer selected we'll go to filter Blur and we apply a motion blur. Then we can click OK. Once we have everything in place, we are going to press Ctrl Shift Alt E and we have all our layers merged. We right click and convert to a smart object, then we we'll go to filter, camera raw filter. Then we are just going to adjust all these settings until you get it right or until you like the outcome. Then you can confirm it. So you can actually play with these settings so you like the outcome. Thanks for watching guys, I hope to see you in my next video, until then, stay creative.